So a while back, I was browsing the coming soon sections of the eShop and I saw this little game called Anima Gate of Memories. I took a look at it, saw action RPG, saw 3D action RPG, and well, let's just say I immediately wanted to play it. It's taken me a while to get to it with everything else in my queue, but I'm definitely glad I did. A bundle of the original game Anima Gate of Memories on PC, Xbox One, and PS4, and the newly released quote unquote sequel, here is my review of the bundle Anima Arcane Edition for the Nintendo Switch. Before I begin the rest of this review, do note that I will have very limited footage of the second game, The Nameless Chronicles, because it contains heavy spoilers for the first game, not only in story cutscenes, but also in the environments you navigate past the intro. The story of Gate of Memories centers around a nameless woman known as the Bearer, who made a pact with an evil entity locked in a magic book. While doing work for her organization, the Church, she finds herself trapped inside a magical tower, cut off from her own world and her own dimension. She's then sent through the tower to defeat all of the powerful enemies gathered there so she can prevent a prophecy that's going to end the world from happening. Now, Gate of Memories has a pretty interesting story, especially towards the end, but the early half is really sloppy and really just doesn't make a lot of sense. While you do get a good amount of backstory for all of the entities that you're going to fight, which admittedly does have a lot of good storytelling in it. The story around the bearer and the demon inside her book really just comes down to him constantly flirting with her and her constantly telling him to shut up. It doesn't get very good between them until the end. And this is further brought down by very, very lackluster voice acting. Not just in how the actors acted, but also in the fact that there are a lot of terms where the different actors didn't agree on the same pronunciation. So you hear a name being spouted in the same conversation with being pronounced two completely different ways. Now the Nameless Chronicles is a little different. Instead of it being really a sequel, it's more of a separate perspective. Nameless Chronicles takes place at the same time as the main game, Gate of Memories but is centered around the Nameless, one of the antagonists from the first game, and gives a huge amount of insight on the backstory and how all of the events of the first game ended up happening. Admittedly, it does a much better job of storytelling. Now, the lackluster voice acting isn't really any better, but it does a better job of telling its story. By gameplay, Anima Arcane Edition is a bundle of two third-person action RPGs with a lot of platforming, puzzle, and exploration elements. Since this is a bundle, you get both Anima games in the same download. You don't really get any extra content in Arcane Edition, it's just a way to buy the two games together instead of separate. Albeit for a cheaper price, given that Arcane Edition is $30 and the two separately add up to $40. The main way you progress through these games is through exploration. In Gate of Memories, you start in this kind of hub world tower that's linked to all of these huge areas, each centered around one of the bosses of the game, requiring you to explore, find items, and solve puzzles in order to find and clear that boss and move on to the next. The nice thing here is that you've got freedom of choice. You usually have three or four of these areas available so you can navigate them in any order you want. You don't have to go to Wing 1 and fight Boss 1 first. You could go to Wing 2 or Wing 3 first. The Nameless Chronicles, however, is far more linear than the Gate of Memories. You start out going just one direction, so you've got far less freedom of choice. Outside of exploration, you're going to be doing a lot of platforming and puzzle solving. To unlock the boss room of each area, you're going to have to go around and solve puzzles to find memories that not only teach you the backstory of each boss, but also serve as keys to unlock the boss room. Of course, you can't just run around all this tower and take out all these entities unopposed. In almost every area of the game, there are going to be a lot of enemies, mid-bosses, and major bosses that you're going to have to fight. And this is where the game starts feeling a lot like Devil May Cry and Bayonetta. You're running around in real time and it feels like an action game. You've got combos that you can do with physical attacks, you've got magic attacks you can do, and you've also got gauges for those attacks that go down whenever those attacks are used. So you gotta be careful how much you're doing certain actions to make sure those gauges don't go down to zero and you're not able to dodge incoming attacks for a while. And dodging is a key factor in this game. Anima's not an easy game to play. Even on the casual and easy difficulty, 
a lot of the bosses are very, very difficult. This is not an action RPG where you just run in and mash buttons. This is an action RPG where you have to watch your enemies, dodge incoming attacks, and use those gaps to jump in and do combos. Along with that is the fact that in Gate of Memories you can swap between two characters and some enemies are invincible depending on what character you're using to fight them. Now once combat ends, the RPG side of things really comes into play. You gain experience from defeating enemies and bosses and eventually you will level up. Leveling gives you skill points that can be used in a skill tree to learn new abilities and upgrade previous abilities. Knowing all of this, how much time are you going to be spending on these games? Anima isn't a massive and meaty RPG like Xenoblade Chronicles or Disgaea, but it does have a decent amount of length to it. Each of the two games should take you around 12 to 14 hours to complete, so that puts the bundle at around 25 hours of content for $30, assuming you don't go into New Game Plus and try to get all of the alternate endings for both games. Now let's talk presentation. The graphics themselves look very colorful and very smoothed out. I didn't really see any jagged edges anywhere, but the real beauty of the game's presentation isn't the graphics, it's the music. Every area of the game is filled with beautifully crafted background music. You've got really high intensity battle music and you've got real serene calming music in all of the areas that don't have enemies. I found myself stopping countless times in both games just to sit back and listen to how beautiful the soundtrack is. Of course, the final part of presentation is also done very well. Both games give you a nice and smooth 60 frames per second in and out of docked mode. For a game that was made only by a handful of people, that's pretty impressive. Now let's get into battery life which was basically the sacrifice for all of that good optimization. Here are my battery times from 100% to 0%. Maximum brightness with the Wi-Fi on, 2 hours and 11 minutes. Maximum brightness with the Wi-Fi off, 2 hours and 13 minutes. Lower brightness with the Wi-Fi on, 2 hours and 18 minutes. Lower brightness with the Wi-Fi off, 2 hours and 21 minutes. So we're fairly low on the battery spectrum, but I consider it pretty worth it, especially for that nice 60 frames per second. Now in conclusion, Anima Arcane Edition is a bundle of two fun and challenging action RPGs that have a bit of a Devil May Cry and Castlevania sort of feel to them. Unfortunately, the lackluster voice acting and a very weak opening story of the first game makes it easy to put players off, but... If you stick around, the gameplay and the end game story are definitely worth it. Reviews to Go rates Anima Arcane Edition for the Nintendo Switch an 8 out of 10. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them below or head to the website at www.reviewstogo.com.